The campaign begins. Hey everybody, Ray here. Welcome to today's Genshin Impact character video. It's time for the almighty Raiden Shogun's turn under the spotlight. I know it's taken me a little while to get this video out, but I wanted to make sure I could get this character's levels and talents up for this video. And there's some decorating going on here, so getting some quiet time to record has not been easy. Before we jump in, if you're interested in character videos like these, then please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're new to Genshin Impact and you need some advice, let me know in the comments because I'm here to help. The Raiden Shogun has many titles and is the Archon presiding over the nation of Inazuma. She's in good company joining the Pole Arms team as its first Electro edition. If you haven't played through the Inazuma Archon quest yet, I want you to experience this for yourself, so I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But the Raiden Shogun is definitely shaping up to be an interesting addition to the story and I can't wait to see the fallout of her actions. The Raiden Shogun made her playable debut with patch 2.1 on the Reign of Serenity event wish. Once the banner ends, she will not be available in the standard wish, so if you miss out, you will have to wait for her rerun. But if you are planning to add her to the team, then there are some things you'll want to stock up on. First up is the Electro Crystals and Storm Beads from the Thunder Manifestation, pick some Amakumo Fruit from the spooky Serai Island, and gather handguards as trophies from defeated enemies. For her talents, you'll need Teachings of Light, more hand guards, and Molten Moment from battling La Signora. If you want to max out any of the Shogun's talents, you will also need up to three Crowns of Insight. And then once you've added the Raiden Shogun to your team, any more wishes returning the same character will give you her Stella Fortuna, which will light up her constellation, Imperatrix Ombrosa. This will improve what she can do in combat and how she can assist your team. So let's take a peek at what she can do. Her basic attack Origin performs five consecutive Spear Strikes or consume stamina for an upward slash. And when plunging from midair will cause AoE damage upon impact with the ground. I'm starting to notice more and more characters with these unique little animations between attacks and I really like some of the shoguns. Also her charge attack looks like a moon so a 10 out of 10 from me. I'm easily pleased. For her elemental skill Transcendence Baleful Omen, the Raiden Shogun will unveil a shard of her Euphemia dealing electro damage to nearby opponents and granting nearby party members the Eye of Stormy Judgment. Which sounds really cool. The Eye of Stormy Judgment. <laughs> well, it'd probably sound a lot cooler if I didn't sound like a toddler. But anyway, while present, the Eye of Stormy Judgment will unleash a coordinated attack with your active character dealing AoE electro damage. The Eye will also increase the active character's elemental burst damage based on that burst's energy cost for the Eye's duration. Her fifth constellation, Shogun's Descent, increases the level of Transcendence, Baleful Omen, by three talent levels. Now onto the elemental burst, Secret Art, Muso Shinsetsu. This is probably what you're all waiting to see, as the passive talents and constellations have a huge focus on this elemental burst. The Raiden Shogun will unleash the Muso no Hitotachi, entering the Muso Ishin state and dealing AoE electro damage. In the Muso Ishin state, the Raiden Shogun will wield the Muso no Hitotachi in battle, and all normal, charge, and plunging attacks will be converted to electro damage that cannot be overridden, and these attacks will be considered elemental burst damage. When hitting opponents during this state, she will regenerate energy for all nearby party members and can trigger the effect up to five times in the skill's duration. While in the Muso Ishin state, the Raiden Shogun's resistance to interruption is increased, and she becomes immune to electro charge reaction damage. The damage dealt by Secret Art Muso Shinsetsu can be increased by Chakra Desiderata. When nearby party members use their elemental bursts, the Raiden Shogun will build Resolve Stacks. Using Secret Art Muso Shinsetsu will consume the Resolve Stacks and increase the damage dealt by the Muso no Hitotachi and the attacks in the Muso Ishin state. For her first passive talent, Wishes and Numbered, when nearby party members gain elemental orbs or particles, Chakra Desiderata gains two Resolve Stacks and the effect can occur once every three seconds. Her first constellation, Ominous Inscription, Chakra Desiderata will gather resolve even faster. When Electro characters use their elemental bursts, the resolve gained is increased by 80%, and for the other elements, the resolve gained is increased by 20%. For her second constellation, Steelbreaker, while using Muso no Hitotachi and in the Muso Ishin state, the Raiden Shogun's attacks will ignore 60% of the opponent's defence. Her third constellation, Shinkagi Bygons, increases the level of secret art Muso Shinsetsu by three talent levels. The fourth constellation, Pledge of Propriety, when the Muso Ishin state expires, 
all nearby party members excluding the Shogun gain a 30% attack bonus for 10 seconds. And the 6th constellation, Wishbearer, while in the Muso Ishin state, attacks by the Raiden Shogun that are considered part of her elemental burst and hit opponents will decrease all nearby party members' elemental burst cooldown by 1 second. It can be triggered a total of 5 times during the state's duration and will not apply to the Raiden Shogun herself. For her second passive talent, Enlightened One, each 1% above 100% energy recharge that Raiden Shogun has grants her a 0.4% electro damage bonus and 0.6% boost to energy restored from the Muso Ishin state. For her final passive talent, All Preserver, Mora expended when ascending swords and pole arms is decreased by 50%, and that certainly came in very handy during this patch. Now, I know what you're thinking, what adorable eternity themed treat can the Raiden Shogun cook up for us? Well, the Raiden Shogun cannot cook. Relatable. She is the first character that does not have a specialty dish. Okay, so now it's time to check out the build I'm using for the Shogun. I didn't roll for any of her constellations, even though they do look really good, because I know my luck and there's no way my next 5 star will come quickly. Her talent levels are currently 6, 8 and 7 and she's definitely a candidate for at least one of the crowns I'm hoarding. She's currently level 80 with 5 ascension levels unlocked and I do plan to unlock her 6th ascension but the Thunderbat is giving me trouble and I didn't want to fight it anymore for a bit. So I'll level her up higher at a later date. For friendship level I'm bringing Raiden along in my team as much as possible as she's chilling in the teapot so we've just hit level 5 friendship. Now when it comes to her weapon I have a confession to make. Remember in my wishing video how I said I was going to save all of those primos for upcoming banners? I didn't. I used them all up. And for what? An unforged. But I persisted, and I knew now the weapon would definitely drop, so I kept trying, thinking maybe I'll make it all the way to 80 again before the banner ends, and I got another lucky drop. So now I'll save the primo gems, promise. So I have paired Raiden with her signature weapon, the Engulfing Lightning. I didn't think I'd be able to max it out before this video is ready, but I have been able to get it all the way to level 90. I'm not going to try and refine it because there is no way my luck is going to continue being this good. When it comes to artifacts, I'm conflicted on how I should build her. Currently I'm running her with some artifacts I've pinched from Mona while I work on a better supply of Emblem of Severed Fate items, or leveling some I already have. So her flower and feather aren't bad, but could still be better. This timepiece is going to be amazing on someone who scales on HP. An electro damage cup here which needs replacing with a better piece, and she has a crit rate helmet. When it comes to stats, she currently has the highest HP out of any of my characters at 22,371 points. Her attack is at 1,494 and defense is 928. I definitely need to try and squeeze some more mastery in there as it's only 33. I'm hoping to improve her crit rate to crit damage a bit as well and currently it's at 45.8% crit rate and 96.6% .6 crit damage. I do want to get a bit more energy recharge in there, but 244.5 for now isn't too bad. She does also have a 14.9% electro damage bonus from her cup, but I might switch that out for more attack instead. We're going to take a slightly different approach to team comps today, because the Raiden Shogun is another character that will fit a specific role and purpose within the team, so it can basically go anywhere. But like normal, let's start off with the Electro Resonance High Voltage. So Superconduct, Overloaded and Electro Charge reactions are guaranteed to generate Electro Elemental Particles. You know what I meant. So pairing your double Electro team with Cryo, Pyro or Hydro units is going to build up those bursts faster. So first let's consider Lisa, The Traveller, Kujo Zara and Kaching. Lisa and The Traveller are two options everybody will have access to. Lisa's burst will continue to deal electro damage while she's off the field, and the electro traveller will help with the team's recharge. The more bursts your team can pop off, the quicker the Raiden Shogun can build resolve stacks. Releasing alongside the Raiden Shogun in 2.1 is Kujo Sara. Both her burst and skill provide attack boost to the team, and as an archer, gives you a ranged attack option. If you've been able to add Kuching to the team, she has a low burst cost, and it seems like it's almost always ready. In the early adventure ranks, I often rank Kuching as a main DPS, and with her being able to use her burst so often, it's going to charge those resolve stacks much faster. That, of course, leaves Fischl, Beidou, and Razor. Fischl is usually one of my go-to supports, but could also fit a main DPS role and be supported by the Raiden Shogun. When it comes to Beidou, by now you've probably seen that the Raiden Shogun and Beidou do not complement each other on the field, but if Mahoyo fix it, then it's definitely a pairing to try out. I haven't built my Razor up yet, but I feel there's a potential for a DPS Razor to pair well with the Shogun, so let me know if you try that out. 
Now let's talk fellow five stars for a moment. Other than Kuching, I think Chi Chi and Mona are noteworthy pairings, as Chi Chi can fill the space of your healer and cause superconduct, and that would also benefit your team if you were running a physical damage dealer as your main. Mona can bring reaction damage, crowd control, and her burst is a damage amplifier. We still haven't seen Jean in almost a year, but I have been running the Shogun with Diluc for some tougher content and the additional overload damage is quite nice. Now I do have one limited 5 star I want to recommend here and that's Eula. She hasn't had a rerun yet so there is a chance she'll be back in future. So with the two of them, Cryo, Electro, Physical Damage, they are going to hit hard. I'm currently trying to rebuild my Eula otherwise I think I'd be using these two together all the time. Okay so back to 4 stars with a great substitute for Eula and that is Rosaria. I currently have my Rosaria built more towards physical damage and she can fill the role of a physical main or a cryo support. Sticking with the theme of cryo, Diona can also offer your team healing, ranged attacks and shields, while everyone will have Kaya to keep the cryo going while off the field. Of course you can never go wrong with the ultimate support units Sucrose, Xing Cho or Bennett. I know a lot of people consider Xing Cho and Bennett two of the best supports but I think Sucrose deserves a spot on that list too, for boosting the team's mastery, generating particles and crowd control. And I may just be biased because I love Sucrose. Both Xing Cho and Bennett are able to help out with healing due to their skills and their elements will pair nicely with a double electro team. I do also like that Xing Cho's elemental abilities continue to apply Hydro while he's off the field. If you found any interesting pairings that I haven't mentioned here, let me know down in the comments. So let's check out the Shogun in action while we round off. When it comes to gameplay, her Chakra Desiderata mechanic is really interesting to me as I'm usually reluctant to use my character's bursts in case I use them at the wrong time. So to be able to boost their damage and then the Shoguns by using them has brought a fun new element to gameplay for me. If you saw my wishing video you'll already know that I was excited for this character anyway and it seems like she'll fit well into whatever team you throw her in. She has a wonderful aesthetic and an interesting persona. I do hope the events from the Archon quest are explored more deeply in future patches and not just glossed over. When it comes to the Raiden Shogun story quest I thought it was kind of a sweet idea for the most part but it felt a lot more like a hangout than a story quest. For a story quest, it lacked the depth a character of such complexity should have, so hopefully if she gets a second chapter, they'll make it a little bit deeper. So that's all for today's video. If you have enjoyed this one and found it helpful, leave me a little like to let me know, and if you want to see more content like this, then please consider bopping that subscribe button. Don't forget to tune in next time where we'll take a closer look at the new 4-star unit, Kujo Sara. But until then, see you next time. I command the thunder in all corners of the world to cease. Rest well tonight.